Stick your neck out. The weekly podcast of the Giraffe Heroes Foundation. This week, we just did a new start in our calendars, hopefully full of hope and potential. We just opened the book, its pages are blank, and it's time for us to put words on them ourselves. Welcome to Stick Your Neck Out. I am Jean-Pierre Aguiar-Duragnona. In most societies, being a man or a woman is not simply a matter of different biological and physical characteristics. Men and women face different expectations about how they should dress or behave. Relations between men and women, whether in the family, the workplace, or the public sphere, also reflects understandings of the talents, characteristics, and behavior appropriate to women and to men. Today, in the podcast to restore your faith in humanity, we are going to be talking about gender. And my guest is the founder of Voices of Humans, Kantari alumni, Kapila Rasnayaka. Welcome, Kapila. I'm glad you joined us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome to Genderless World. <laughs> <laughs> Voices of Humans works to promote a genderless society, a terminus that many might find irritating. The idea of a genderless society will seem absurd to the mainstream, I assume. What is your definition of a genderless society? Genderless is like, be neutral, be a human. Because when you say human, it's a kind of, uh, what you call, common word, you know. But genderless is, we learn gender stereotypes from the beginning of our childhood, And it creates some limitations, barriers, opportunities sometimes. It creates power relationship between men and women. And it creates patriarchy as a system. Therefore, genderless means just represent yourself as you without masculinities and femininities. It means you are free to fly everywhere. So so that, that's what I, what I want to say through these concepts called genderless. You are just you. You are just you. So that's what I want to promote, actually. And how did you come up with this idea of a genderless society? Oh, yeah. Actually, even when I was a child, I realized that, like, man should be like this and uh, woman should be like this. Like, I'm not talking about biological component. I'm talking about social learning component, you know, sociological aspects. So I think after my uh, first degree, Bachelor of Social Work, I learn gender and development. Then after some time, I work for an organization for three years. I talk about men and masculinity issues and gender stereotypes. Then I realized that, oh, 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 you know, like this, everything we are learning, you know, like, and we are not getting this everything uh, as a biological thing. This everything is a constructed thing. But I thought, oh, this is real. Like being a man is real, being a woman is real, but it's not real actually. It's an illusion. Like for an example, like when I was a child, they cut my hair and they said that don't cry, you are a boy and don't play with dolls, you are a boy and uh, don't be emotional, you are a boy. Those are like kind of limitations and barriers for men especially. So then after my degree and after my community experience, I realized that I want to promote genderless concept because When we divide this everything as a woman and as a men thing, like men and woman, again, we are dividing society. We are creating gap, you know, space. I feel like no need this gap anymore because uh, why we can't create like a neutral forms, like neutral. You can wear anything what you like and you can feel anything what you like and not harm into anyone in this society like like okay i have freedom i'm a genderless it's not that mean like i am not respecting to your right okay it means i'm respecting everyone regardless of their gender that's the whole thing so i don't know how it happened like it, it was not like a one night thing like it was not a sudden incident but with my experience my personal experience I realized that like everybody, everyone promoting like a men world and women world, like girls world and boys world. Okay, I will promote genderless world. So so that's how I, I initiate this concept. But some people asking like genderless mean Kapila, Kapila, you are promoting genderless. It means like you are naked. You want to be naked in the jungle or something. I'm saying like, no, no, no. I'm not meaning like being naked, but 
be naked is okay but genderless is like beyond that naked you know beyond naked body it's beyond naked mind it's yeah, so deep yeah. like you are so free when you have genderless concepts <laughs> did you did you get what i said <laughs> yes of course of course i get it i get right. it let me let me ask you something else in some languages like chinese for example don't assign nouns a gender or already have a gender neutral form for people built in but in languages whose grammar is traditionally based on exclusively male or female options like my mother tongue is spanish since i'm a cuban so the answer to this question for people like me can still require an explanation how do you identify what do you say is your identity what pronoun do you use to identify yourself he she they something altogether different <laughs> it's a very very what you call very difficult question with the social constructed world i can say like i'm a person you know i'm a person actually i don't want to identify myself so because if i identify myself again i will create some barriers and then <laughs> some format for my life but with the social constructed world i can identify myself as a person as a human or as a water as a cloud as a tree as a waves because we want to be like waves and we want to be like cloud it has different shapes but this men and women world we are creating some format like even when i play sometime music when i conduct workshops gender workshops i am asking from the children or young people or all people what is this sound belonging to like i'm playing like something like that then they are saying that oh this is very familiar to men men world like men music you know then i'm playing like ta 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 this two categories like men music and female music and male music why we can't enjoy gender neutral music so so this is how it interpret psychologically it's it's not really good i think i mean for me but i can't say it's bad but imagine like clouds waves water if if they say something like i'm a male water i'm a female water I'm a, yeah. I'm a male cl- cloud. <laughs> Now you can understand, right? So yeah, yeah. So as a human, we are the people yeah. who are creating these barriers and the gap between same humans. You can feel love, I can feel love. You can have red blood, I can have red blood. Anyhow, we are living beings. Don't no need any categories like just be a water, but I know it's a it's a difficult thing, but if you can do that you are really you are you are really you are touching this so called freedom you know like yeah yeah it's is we will we'll see we will we'll see so do you think we are ready for a genderless society uh we are ready and there are a lot of young people they they are asking questions from my myself like kapila i want to be genderless how can be how can i be genderless or uh, where i can find like genderless community Uh, yeah so i think people are ready people are ready but someone should guide them you know because when we see the illusion we we think it's real but we, when we deconstruct you, you know you, for an example when you see the building we can say it's a building but when you divide building into certain parts like rooms you are not saying oh it's a building you are saying oh it's a room then again you, when you deconstruct room when you see the small blocks 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 then you will say oh there are no any room it's a block so then <laughs> what we see it's not a real thing therefore man and woman also is a imaginary thinking but but we think it's real that's why sometime men most of the men sometime they are saying that oh i'm not changing myself i'm a man you know Uh, I'm I'm get I'm getting anger no problem man I'm a man man <laughs> I I like and control anyone man you know so because they learn 
they learn these stereotypes from the beginning of the childhood from the media from the family from the religion from the economic institution from the education institution so then we think like uh, we are not opening our bottle so i am creating a space to open that bottle actually so but i know it's difficult some people will say that don't open that bottle because we did we covered that bottle many years you know and some people will say that oh open it open yeah. it i'll just check but i'm not going to inside you know and some people will say yeah it's really nice kapila so you can open the bottle but i'll just look it and but i'm not part of it you know but some people will say just open it i'll come and i'll just experience it let's see how it happen you know so therefore change is possible but mm. we have to try and uh, sometimes it's uncomfortable but i think many people around the world they create different layers throughout this history therefore i also want to create a pattern for this beautiful world creating a genderless pattern will you explain what is a bit more about your idea of gender diversity we are the people who are create this diversity to make a power relationship like one gender is powerful than another gender like that's how, that's that's why we are again created gender discrimination because of the diversity but again we have to understand that with the social system if you respect another gender it's okay but my concept is beyond that this is gender less like no gender like it's not that mean like you have to cut your penis or you have to cut your vagina no it's not like that because we have to respect biological differences it's okay biological creation but i'm talking about social creation sometime that social creation it created some walls some barriers some myths around your self development around yourself so therefore that's why i'm trying to promote this genderless idea i you know this is not a this is not a dream okay i already have genderless jungle in sri lanka even you can come to my jungle it's surrounded by nature you will not imagine when i was in kantar international leadership program i was drawing my genderless jungle picture you know i, I pasted it close to my bedroom my bed actually i had a friend chris mukasa came from africa and i had a girlfriend from uh, still she's a girlfriend i mean <laughs> from thailand so she knows <laughs> these stories yeah and i i draw my picture genderless jungle picture and you will not imagine still i, I have that picture piece of a4 sheet you will not imagine the same structure now situated in sri lanka close to hill mountains called riverston riverston is a tourist destination one of the beautiful uh, world heritage center in sri lanka yeah genderless jungle is already there so i want to promote like genderless community or like slowly i'm promoting it speaking of genderless jungle what is this about how does it look like because you you said before chlai picture people running around naked without clothes <laughs> like like you know how can i picture your genderless jungle yeah actually for your question like that naked yeah i mean we are wearing shirts you know and we are wearing so many dresses why actually we are wearing why because we have fear about other people you know we have fear about social system we have fear about who i am so be naked is okay but the problem is now this society people will put some stones on you because we are not following their instructions because we are living in the society structured society so yeah the gentleless jungle uh, we have at the moment we have tree house if anyone come into a gentleless jungle center we have certain kind of practices like you will not should represent yourself as a man or woman if anything you want to do in the jungle plant in tree explore in nature or something you can always like be neutral okay so the genderless jungle if you are a boy or a girl you you go there and you don't need to i mean if you want to do whatever you want to you don't have to it's like not only the boys are carrying the the heavy things and the girls are doing the laundry or that's that's your idea kind of yeah yeah it's a, it's a kind of that idea like uh, because when we live in the society 
in the normal society we have to represent ourselves as a man or woman even you know we are so close to uh, this traditional masculinities and femininities but when you come to this place actually everybody should cook together everybody should enjoy music or whatever it is together like uh, with the understanding of genderless and also uh, we have like different uh, activities like water healing like therapies like not therapies but enjoying water and uh, the med- mindfulness meditation and singing bo- singing bowl meditation and uh, my meditation is is different it's not like just breathe in and breathe out it's like some sometimes it's a wild meditation like dancing and uh, dancing meditation like because you are you are you're concerned about what you are doing you are conscious about your activity you are paying attention to what you are doing actually and also we are cooking together yeah, i don't i don't know how to explain it because still we are developing the thing but i hope one day i will promote to the world because i don't see any even gender neutral toilets we have so no any specific like ma- men toilet for men or toilet for women gender neutral like a- anybody can go but with the respect <laughs> because all around the world we we created separate toilets because men socialize in a different way and women socialize in a different way and uh, it's not their biological thing it's a socialized thing for an example when men go to toilet they are not they are peeing everywhere they are not washing it i don't know in our societies okay okay so not our office but other places <laughs> yeah our office also sometime no no but it's that's the way it is that's the way it that's is. the way yeah, it is yeah, yeah. yes so then in with the genderless concept like we have gender neutral toilet actually in genderless jungle and we are sharing common space yeah that's the basic thing at the moment we have we'll see like i'm also learning now. i don't know how to explain perfect way paul even sabria kantari you know so uh, founders they are saying that plan your thing properly of course like i also have a plan but it's not plan in the sense like the proper plan like this certain uh, like you know it's, it's it's not like a professional plan thing Now, i think i think what you what you what i i understand from what you are trying to say is that you can't plan something that it's not defined because you are kind of against these definitions per se so if you are against definitions and you are against like what the society says is is right or wrong um how can you plan something when you are trying to you know if you're trying to go against this, this yeah world? yeah definitely so definitely think, definitely yeah, yeah. maybe maybe i'm wrong but that's that's what i that's what i get it yeah no that's no, no. I, you, i think you are, you are, you are you are making some sense like like i'm also experiencing because this a uh, this is this concept i didn't learn from somewhere i i this everything uh, actually through my experience and my maybe my past experience i thought to create this platform so therefore i really believe that like through this podcast you are giving value for my concept therefore this is a really good opportunity to me also again to think rethink because i think after kantari leadership program people ask like kapila kapila what is genderless but this is uh, i think first time uh, someone from uh, international organization who asked like uh, what is this genderless concept concept but some people wrote articles about my concept and uh, i did some couple of talk show in sri lanka and for some global communities also but this is the first podcast i'm talking about genderless uh, jungle concept yeah being genderless let's think about me coming to uh, to the genderless jungle how will be my first day there <laughs> so y- you you will not impress like oh wow now i'm genderless so you know no, not like that okay <laughs> so <laughs> you will, you will just you will just explore that's that's it actually but when you when you explore genderless jungle activities and everything you will rethink and refeel something like uh, oh right 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 if you are in the society you can't do this thing because you are thinking like oh people will say like oh you are a man you should not do this thing or you are a girl you should not do it but in genderless jungle your first day 
you will get acceptance as a human as a person no one will criticize you no one will judge you non judgmental space will create will create for you actually so very first day you will feel like oh everybody accept you know that's a good feeling no is it you want to come tomorrow <laughs> It's beautiful. It's awesome. <laughs> the society I'm not accepting right you know? now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to voices of humans. You describe yourself as an art-based organization who works for human rights and environment protection and for the genderless society. How does your work get translated to the ground level to the communities you work in? That's fantastic. Yeah, actually voices of humans uh, have three component One is like we are making theater based art based productions like theaters street drama monologues narrations uh, stage drama disruptive theaters and traditional theaters so we are making uh, theater based tools productions to talk about social issues especially gender inequality men and masculinity issues now we recently started uh, environmental issues and uh, yeah and second component we are making documentaries video productions films and animation videos to talk about gender equality and environmental issues and third component we are designing art based workshops because most of the workshops sometimes people they really not using art they using powerpoint presentation sometimes it's boring sometimes <laughs> speech sometimes sessions but our art based workshops always like we have lot of activities because people like to engage and ask some and then activity based workshops art based activity based workshop it will create opportunity to come to the middle without sitting on the chair they will come and they will join therefore we are creating art based workshop and we are conducting workshops for private sector government sector and recently we did a project for UNDP United Nation Development Fund as well as for the Ministry of uh, Women Affairs in Sri Lanka we were talking about how men can share household activities in covid-19 time so because most of the men they didn't share household activities because of the traditional gender norms and then uh, women and girls women and girls they work so hard because they have to uh, feed their husband and boys because they stay at home uh, during the covid-19 time and you were saying that as a papa <laughs> you have to take care of your 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 children <laughs> that's really nice i i appreciate it yes of course there are two of us in this relationship but there are two parents it's not just one of them that's the way i have i've been socialized that's why it's just yeah that's cool that's cool and uh, yeah i i gave that message through animation videos and uh, recently we did a video for uh, one of the international organization called arigato international from japan and also sarvodaya is a civil society largest civil society organization in sri lanka and we develop uh, cyber bullying to prevent cyber bullying animation videos uh, we we just finished that project actually as well as uh, we did a couple of documentaries for the asia development bank as well as uh, under one of the local organization called uh, fist foundation for innovative social development they are the they are the local organization and yeah it's a, it was about like men and masculinity issues and how men can change their mindset towards gender equality and therefore we did couple of projects and i'm really happy about voices of humans and also we develop a national uh, theater like a uh, we did 42 performance it's called a complaint from a man the production produced by local organization called FISD foundation for innovative social development the place where i learn gender equality through community intervention yeah that's beautiful voices of humans has done a great deal of work uh, for the community and a major part of this work include youtube videos Why choose in the social media as a forum to steer political change in Sri Lanka? Uh, in Sri Lanka as YouTube community actually they really like to listen more gossips, you know. It's not 
but other countries i saw youtube <laughs> like people using youtube to talk about black hole and uh, so many innovative things but i'm really i'm really this is truth this is truth if you watch trendy number 1 2 3 4 5 6 sri lanka videos most of the things are about like gossips and some actors and actors and something like that but of course those are very important maybe but other important stuff also we have in in in, in the world <laughs> so <laughs> therefore i am creating <laughs> awareness through my youtube channel kapila rasnayak youtube channel english youtube channel and i have another local youtube channel in my language singhala language kapila tv i am creating videos to talk about actually some political issues as well as gender issues sexual and reproductive health issues environmental issues i'm making comedy videos actually i did a video about current education system and i i was i was close to one of the coconut tree you have coconut tree do you know coconut tree right yeah Yeah, yeah yeah coconut is coconut yeah all right uh, it's coconut <laughs> i was close to coconut tree and uh, then i was telling people like a coconut tree gives coconut so current education system also like that teacher will come to the class and he will say he or she will say like coconut tree gives coconut but if he say like coconut tree gives mango children can find something you know so so then i i i i criticize current education system that that video went viral more than 1 million views and even indian people they were so much attached to this coconut yeah. tree video so like that i create awareness through my funny videos and because of that current like in present when i show something like okay this what is this then <laughs> they are saying that this is not a phone this is a monkey <laughs> you know like they deconstruct yeah. this learned yeah. behavior <laughs> yeah so yeah no, that leads that leads actually to my next question that leads to my next question in your youtube channel you are talking serious things in um, i would say less conventional way you just mentioned it i would say weird and unique but to the point do you think people still get the real message and still take you seriously as an educated professional raising awareness in important issues in society what's your your experience in this field earlier like when they see my videos they thought like oh who is this foolish guy or who is this crazy guy uh, oh maybe he he is using some drugs <laughs> he's smoking maybe marijuana to do these videos yeah so they were thinking like that and they asking like kapila which drug you are using you know something like that and you will not believe like some people from outside the country they ask kapila i have good stuff can i uh, send it to you and you can do business something like that so <laughs> then then yeah so because my i think then then i realized that my mind is always high <laughs> you know like my mother and father did a great job to produce this child kapila rasnayaka and i have a really i the really good cells so because of that the craziness and the educational and deep we call good shit actually but i don't want to use this word but good thing it appear in a different way but after some time what happened actually the people who commented on my videos by asking are you crazy or are you gay or are you something like that you know being a gay is okay but you know they are uh, trying to you know pass silly mm-hmm. remarks sometime like by criticizing my activity yeah 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 so they now they know actually oh uh, he has some educational background he did social work and i i i, I i'm not he has a point yeah yeah he has a point like even even actually some artists famous artists even india in sri lanka and they really appreciate in my work famous cricketers also they send some messages to me like kapila don't stop your work do your w- videos it's really nice i know it's crazy but it has good message every time so because of that actually i got so much so much motivation and vibe that's so awesome. that's why yeah. like i because some people using drugs to be to be creative but without using drugs human mind 
human cells and human human creation we can do lot of stuff it's really magical how our brain works sometimes always when i see the door yeah. i can see like yeah it's magical it's magical and when i open the door i can see something coming you know so we have to open the door if we want to get something you know if you close our door we can't get we can get maybe some hot weather maybe inside the room so but just open the door that's the that's the thing i want to say but that's it yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Can you please explain why you have such a trust in the performing arts changing lives, like moving the society? I think everything is an art. We are trying to be like kind of so constructed, but everything is art. Like for an example, we born as artists. You imagine like we cry, it has rhythm. We we are playing with our kids like. in sri lanka we are playing with our kids with the rhythm like doi 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 e baba so we are artists everybody is an artist and also you will see like today through social media they are using different colors to give message the artist doing the same thing and when we use words it has art without art you can't listen my talk one hour because i have maybe some kind of rhythm and the pattern you are like to listen otherwise you will say kapila kapila okay time is up we will close our podcast now okay something like that <laughs> but i mean everything has but some people maybe think that art is a different thing art is a different section no no art is part of our life therefore i use art 100% we can do something we can change our lives everywhere is art you know when we when we eat it has art there are different colors different fruits it has art shapes there everything is art so actually yeah. art is everywhere art is everywhere <laughs> you know you are organizing those different activities um, which are the people that uh, catch attention so do you have the impression to actually reach awareness throughout society or is it rather people who anyways deal with the question deconstructing truly norms of how the society should be built yeah actually i don't want to teach or i don't want to guide anyone but i i want to be an example for other people i want to be example like uh, because i really believe that like creating a different uh, layer is a challenge sometime but it's very comfortable and if you see my myself today i'm wearing a actually different dress actually and some people asking kapila you are wearing this dress to impress people or to get attention you know then i'm i'm i'm, I'm smiling and i'm saying that those things will come later but first i'll do activity you know first i'll wear something yeah then people can tell anything <laughs> you know people can say oh you are getting attention yeah, yeah. or you are mad or you are educated but first do something therefore each and everything i am doing actually to give my experience to the world how i see the world but there are many people they see world in a different way those people are also we can't categorize like myself is right or others are wrong there are no any right or wrong thing around the world everything is a perception and socialized nurture nurtured behavior therefore i really want to encourage people to create love to create some care you know and to deconstruct something then really it will give you peace then you will not see any fault you will see opportunities you will see oh i can share something therefore my videos and my activities even voices of humans we i stand for to create something i don't know what is the perfect world but i want to create some some happy moments and and uh, some impressive moments for the people because even sometimes when i go to some communities they are saying that kapila and we are happy because of you sometimes when i conduct women empowerment program they are saying that we are happy 
then when I come to office, people ask him, what is the key indicator and how you measure ha happiness? How you, what you call, monitoring and evaluation? They ask in monitoring and evaluation plan. Then I'm telling that I saw how many people smile, but we can't get that data to the paper, you know? So they need different data. So <laughs> did you get what I say? Like, but I'm happy. Maybe I can't, <laughs> I didn't change their life, but at least they were happy for two hours. Yeah, and that's, and that's it. I think that's the most important thing. So as someone who argues against a conservative and often restrictive view of gender and sexuality, what worries you the most? I mean, everybody has sexuality, their sexual orientation. I respect sexual orientation and their sexuality. But I, I want to say that uh, respect everybody's sexuality and sexual orientation and don't think that, oh, my sex is so powerful. Only my sexuality is right. Other sexuality is wrong. We can't criticize others' sexual orientation and uh, just respect others' sexuality. But the, if you talk about gender, gender is a learned behavior. Therefore, try to just take a step back. Just think how I can make myself with a neutral forms. Then without that two mask, this is a maskism world, no? Mask. Mask, Marxism, yeah. So, <laughs> without mask, men and women mask, we can see the world. Yeah, in your country talk, we can listen to some of the voices educating boys and girls who uh, to identify to what is expected to be the proper gender. Can you go a bit deeper into how is being socialized in Sri Lanka? Yeah, in Sri Lanka, with the cultural context, actually, in earlier society, we didn't see very much gendered power relationship. We had a very neutral form, actually. Even men were men wearing like the same clothes sometimes. Even our king and ancient kings also. Of course, it was a patriarchal, like a men created some power and all the king were men, especially. But I can see after British colonized world, after Victorian culture, after British came to Sri Lanka, they created these stereotypes. Like for women and for men, different roles, different gender roles, different tasks. Otherwise, when you go to history in Sri Lanka, most of the men and women, they played the same role actually, most of the time. But after some time, uh, after 1978, uh, uh, open economy, everything, uh, most of the stereotypical cultural elements came to this, this land. So because of that, this pink world began and blue world began and pink based industry <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like I, I'm a Cuban and I was also socialized in this men, women kind of society, even though the, the women in Cuba are like really empowered, but still you have in the society, like I remember, for example, friends of mine who were asking me when, when I've got, um, when we got our first kid and, and with the second one too, we didn't want to know what, what was his or its gender kind of. We were like, blind the whole time we didn't want it to know we tell the doctors we don't want to know and i remember telling this to my family and my my friends in cuba and they asking me but you know what are you going to do with the nursery and uh, which kind of clothes are you want to buy for the kid if you don't know if it's a he or a she and i was like what the hell i mean i don't really care about that i mean there are there are a lot of colors in the rainbow they are blue but there there is also green and there's also yellow and there's also purple and there's also like thousands of colors that you can use i mean it, i mean this color doesn't have to define you so i wanted really to know how how you were raised how you were socialized did you really have to follow these norms from the family actually i also had that same structure i had three sisters and one brother all the sisters they helps mother and uh, Even my mother asked, like, uh, my mother always 
my parents actually uh, they support for my my each and everything but of course i had the same background like this promoting stereotypes but without knowing it we can't blame to parents but uh, after some time i think after my social work interventions and social experience i travel most of the countries i saw people and uh, their lifestyle i was in india for two and a half years three years i did sociology for my ma then i studied like the relationship between human and society this everything created a platform to think about again and again i follow rene de cartesian deconstructionism and uh, foucault and uh, one of my friend karl marx good friend of mine <laughs> <laughs> few friends i mean most of the friends yeah, around the world they support to understand something so and also recently actually i am watching most of the famous shows like their stories then it it, it gives good therapy to my mind and my body to think something so of course everybody going following their journey i'm also following my journey so everybody is <laughs> yeah living and this this journey of yours led you to to found also the genderless jungle which we were talking about before and this is a center where the participants experience primitive life in nature meditate and camp under the stars in the mountains in sri lanka what do any of those activities have to do with gender <laughs> okay actually if we just look at the nature actually for me nature doesn't have any gender nature have sex nature do sex sometimes they do masturbation i don't know maybe nature doing it trees and the plants they are doing it we never know they have a connection they have families all the trees and uh, we can learn gender neutral many things from nature and even a co walk and water therapy and water relaxation some meditation or the breathing and everything it's a very neutral thing like walking in the jungle is a very neutral thing and with the nature and we are hugging trees and we are hiking and we are going to some top mountains and we are having a primitive life because primitive life is the place where we can learn the basic thing you know those everything is a raw like raw not the cooked not the shopping not the supermarket you know supermarket all is categorized you know yeah that's how that's why we can learn many things from nature even gender equality we can learn from nature how they support each other look at the one tree so many other trees just going around that tree they are supporting each other but we are the people all the bastards some bastards <laughs> 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 so we are developing the world according to the human expectation but if we go to nature we can learn many things equality justice respect love everything so that's why i use all as nature and genderless jungle to promote this concept but as i mentioned like theater and other tools i'm using for the constructed world no uh, definitely we have been talking the whole time about the norms in the society that pressures men's health especially the ones struggling with issues regarding their health sexuality economic power etc but saying also that many of us don't really talk about our personal problems actually because like we were saying the society does not allow us to do so so do you have some advice for those out there struggling emotionally with it yeah emotions we need actually if i i saw a lot of motivational speakers they are saying like you're going to be happy you're going to be happy man no we can't do that we can't be happy if we happy like ha 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 ha, ha, ha. you think we can be happy every time no but live in the moment we can live in the moment we can understand every emotion part of our life sometimes we have sadness sometimes we have mental struggle sometimes we have fear sometimes we have happy enjoy each and every moment because everything is connect each other if you see every day 
the sun is every morning sun is there first day you will say oh sun is there wow second day you will say oh sun is there wow third day you will say oh sun is there fourth day you oh sun again fifth day sixth day is yes, sunrise look at every day no no rain in no so imagine the rain is there sun is there moon is there everything is different again you will even so like that if you have any problem any issue of course it's a part of our life that's why we born actually so therefore for a man i want to say that if you feel pain just tell i have pain you know like because you are a man no need to hide your feelings if you want to cry just cry and if you hurt just tell people i hurt you know i hurt because because i'm a human you know yeah it's not anything not related to men or women is just a jargon just a brand you know but as a human as a person you can feel love and pain and everything therefore for men show your emotion show your uh, the healthy respectable relationship as well as mental health is very important and because you are a man no need to hide your good emotion your good healthy feelings so i i i want to and also for our girls uh, i want to tell that like if anyone said that because you are a girl you should hide your capacity or emotion or whatever it is no don't don't no need come to generous world and feel yourself as a person and be neutral because as a living being we all feel the same feeling with tears sometime with happiness sometime so therefore don't hide anything talk and share and give some exp- example to others then others also will learn from you you are totally right and that leads to my next question question in all these role models looking also at the lgbtqi movement what about masculinity and femininity about heteronormative men and women i imagine they are confused about this this course how do you take them on the right one thing is like lgbtq community and heterosexual community and these are like a sexual orientation and we have our sexuality and is really attached to our our biology biological uh, differences as well as is attached to our our mental and physical health and well-being and feelings as well therefore always people they try to create something called like right thing right like as a heterosexual person we feel like we are right or gay or lesbian bisexual transgender because of that heterosexual people showing their power to the i mean lgbtq community so for me i just want to say that like today we have google and everything if any and have any problem if any religion or anyone promote like these things as a as a psychological issue just google it just check it and uh, you can find the logic and answers there though every every everything attached to respect respect so lgbtiq community gay lesbian bisexual transgender community heterosexual community every, everybody have different choices so respect their choices and don't just check your mirror with your face but grab all the people and just look at the mirror and you will see a lot of people with you that's the message i want to tell and respect is most important thing. these are very common topics every day people are talking but again because of a structured mindset we are like to show our power and sometimes it's a kind of political power yeah but respect is most important thing respect and acceptance are, i mean are two key words and these are some concepts anybody should have in their mindsets but a lot of people don't really look at them the way they have to or don't, don't really treat them the way they, you should treat them you know kapila how is your relationship to manhood oh i, I have a good relationship when when it comes to biological relationship always i like to have good sex and good feelings and because manhood i think as a is a social constructed thing manhood manhood is is like a robin robin hood like manhood 
hood hood <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the the concept always developed you know manhood but as a man always i have personal connection to this person as a man i respect as a biological man but uh, again i i want to say that like but it will not limit my capacity it will always give strength my manhood or my man being a man it will always give like positive vibration to create something so that's what i like according to my understanding this is how ca- how i can answer for your question <laughs> <laughs> what will a less gendered world really look like <laughs> it looks like there's a bulb it's blinking you know blinking so the bulb you know it will not remain every time as the same thing so therefore the blinking bulb you know that uh, what you call uh, i don't know english word for that you know the bulb always like working with the with the circuit you know tong 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 yeah tong, tong. Mm-hmm. yeah genderless person is like equal to that bulb you know so always can switch off and switch on switch off switch on when it comes to biological thing <laughs> he can switch on he or she can or whatever genderless person but when it comes to social constructed world always can perform very neutral forms even it's is beyond your dress pattern it's beyond your eating habits it's beyond your job or prop your post or your caste or class or anything it's so beyond like for an example less gender person is like maybe like me because it's not like you are changing your outer fit it's about your understanding what is really equality what is really justice what is really what you want actually Kapila, based in your Kantadi talk, I have one last question. Why are men aggressive? Actually, men are not aggressive. We teach how to be aggressive. Normally, the small kid, even the boy or girl, everybody is aggressive. Everybody. Everybody is aggressive. Everybody is pe- joyful. Everybody. everybody is painful everybody is sarcastic everybody is miserable everybody is very active everybody so but in our society we teach certain things for our boys how to be a man and how to be aggressive because we we accept the aggressiveness from the beginning of the childhood <laughs> when we accept the aggressiveness because of the social constructed patriarchal system that man can show their anger and aggressiveness everywhere because people will say oh he is a man that's why he is aggressive otherwise women and girls also they are aggressive but we teach them don't be aggressive like man you want to be girl be quiet okay okay i'll be quiet i'm a girl you know because it's it's like this like we create two hearts two hearts actually but for one heart we give different learning for another heart we give we give different learning because of that they associate that learning and they play that gender role to meet that social expectation as a man and as a woman that's why men are trying to reach social expectation through masculinities like anger and control behavior and power something like that and women also trying to meet their expectation in a different way therefore men are not aggressive actually everybody is aggressive we teach most of the men how to be aggressive because society is a patriarchal because men should be aggressive to control all the legal system all the political system all the social media system all the art art world everywhere all the religious religious system because if someone is aggressive we are listening no actually for the sake of patriarchy system 
we teach our boys be aggressive then you can get ownership of our land you can get our ownership of our religion you can get ownership ownership of our country be aggressive man then all the men play in that role otherwise all the human are very beautiful and sensitive and very nice kind people but we are the people who promote aggressiveness through different social agents family media religion politics economic institution everything therefore for your last question people are of course aggressive and da 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 da, da. but if you want to create beautiful something who can manage the anger that's the beautiful thing we are going to create for next generation therefore teach your children how to manage your anger no need to be a man or woman to manage your anger no need to be a man or woman to manage your sexual feeling no need to be a man or woman to respect someone no need to be a man or woman to show your love to someone no need to be a man or woman to get your job actually no need to be a man or woman to show your kindness therefore no need to be a man or woman mean genderless person we are creating to through those kind of qualities you you we concluded yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you kapila for joining us uh, for this wonderful talk thank you very much my guest today kapila rasnayaka is the founder of voices of humans in colombo city in sri lanka voices of humans envisions a world where all people work to create a non-violent caring and gender equitable future for themselves and for their children The movement works through collaborative partnerships and advocacy initiatives with voluntary and people's organizations, social and political groups, media and society at large to promote gender equality and justice and to advocate human rights of all individuals. More information and ways to support them you'll find if you go to voicesofhumans.org. You'll find the stories of people sticking their necks out every Tuesday on Spotify, iTunes, our homepage, and every other place where you get your podcast. And if you subscribe, you don't have to look out for us. We'll be coming to you. Next week, my guest is Musema Farouk, founder of Ability Sports Africa with an infinity passion for inclusive sports. He plays disability games such as wheelchair, basketball, football, athletics, and table tennis with blindfolded eyes. His goal is to fight for togetherness in sports and any other leisure activities through empowering children and youth with disabilities and through fostering reverse inclusion. It will be awesome dear listeners if you would like to tell us about your frontline hero. Come and visit us at giraffe-heroes.eu and also have a look to our social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. There are plenty of ways to get in touch with us. My name is Jean-Pierre Aguiar Durañona and I say goodbye today wishing you and your family health, happiness, peace and a wonderful 2021. I hope you allow us to be part of this wonderful year and get to spend also a bit of your time with us again next week. Stick your neck out. The weekly podcast of the Giraffe Heroes Foundation. 